from my book stash. I'm an 11 year old book enthusiast. I review children's books. I am extremely sorry about the long gap in which I did not review any books. But now I have come with a brand new review of an entire series. The name of this series is Horrible Histories which is written by Terry Deary and is illustrated by Martin Brown. It's a fun way to teach world history by making it into a comic book full of funny memes. These books are full of cartoon strips, imagined diary entries and newspaper reports. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. My mother got these books from a Facebook group. I don't have all the books of this series, just these six books. Terry Deary has written these books with the most wicked sense of humor. These books can actually make a good starting point for us kids to know about world history. These books have intriguing titles like The Incredible Incas, The Groovy Greeks, The Awesome Egyptians, The Rotten Romans, The Frightful First World War and The Woeful Second World War. If you are not a fan of reading history books, then the Horrible Histories series is a perfect way to start. These books have very well illustrated covers with puns on them. For example, in the awesome Egyptians, it's written, I want my mummy. I don't think this needs any explanation. In these books, there is always an introduction and a timeline. They have funny illustrations even if the author is writing about not so funny things. A few books have recipes and DIYs from that time for you to try out. This book consistently contains comic strips, quizzes, fox diaries, games and more. This makes this series perfect for children who don't like history. Now to the historical contents of this book. The title of the blurb is pretty much the essence of this book. History with the nasty bits left in. This series tells you about gruesome and bizarre parts of history that you'll never learn about in class. Historical cruelties from all over the world are included. To break up the gruesome events, funny comics are added in to help you along. From the rotten Romans to the incredible Incas, you'll learn about everyone. But when the atrocities get too cruel and too recent, the book takes on a somber tone. The epilogue is usually somber too. Epilogue On 3rd September 1939, the Washington Post newspaper had a headline that read, Both sides agree not to bomb civilians. Six years later, the United States dropped the most horrifying bombs yet invented on the towns of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. What had changed in those six years? People changed. The world had seen so many horrors that thousands of innocent civilian deaths seemed worthwhile if it meant a quick end to the war. In 1939, most people really believed that wars were fought only by soldiers. The Second World War changed that forever. Wars were being fought by everyone, people in the cities as well as men on the battlefields. An American said, total wars are won by the side with the biggest factories. My factory is bigger than your factory. In the Second World War, it had become easier to kill someone when all you had to do was push a button and drop a bomb. You'd never see the suffering you caused. 
but the real horror of the war was that so many people were prepared to kill so many others in cold blood. A screaming child, a weeping woman or a feeble old man. The killers often showed not one drop of pity. That's what war can do to ordinary people. They are the things that make the Second World War the most horrible history of all. The innocence of the victims, the vast numbers of them and the unbelievable cruelty of some of the fighters. That's why truly horrible history can be so important. It helps us to look back at the horror and see the single word from the memorial at the destroyed village of Arador Sur Glen. Remember, why is it that the ones who most need to remember are the ones most likely to forget? There are a few comic strips written by Terry Deary which I found very amusing. Here, let me show you one about Alexander the Great. Alexander, this is your life. You were born Alexander in 356 BC, the greatest Greek ever. Don't call me a Greek, sunshine. The Greeks called my dad a barbarian. Yet you admired the Greek heroes. You loved Homer's poetry so much you carried his story of Troy everywhere. Your old teacher, Aristotle, told us. He slept with it under his pillow, actually. And you had your chance when you were just 20 years old. Your father, King Philip, died. The knight would proudly present his ghost. Died. I was murdered. Stabbed by my own bodyguard and I think I know who put him up to it Alexander it was the I deny it you set off to conquer the world you defeated the Persians then marched on to Egypt and then through Asia but you couldn't beat your own soldiers could you Alex that's right you reached India and your soldiers refused to go any further what did the great Alexander do he sucked, went into his tent for three days and sucked. You kept bower by having people executed if they opposed you, even your best friend Paramenio. Remember when you gave me the chop, Alex, my old mate? You got drunk and stabbed another friend with stuff at the top. You married the most beautiful princesses in the land you conquered. Like I said, stuff at the top. Alex, that was your life? Shame, my love, but at the age of 32, you got drunk once too often, caught fever and died. What? Yes, Alexander the Great, hero, poetry lover, soldier and murderer. That was your life. What I like about this book is that it helps you to understand history by giving it to you in easy, digestible chunks. Before I end this review, I would like to mention that these books are not ideal for reference. They would be more suited to people who would want to skim the tops of various subjects in history. I recommend these books to 10 year olds and above. I give this book series four stars as I learned a lot of facts about the world history from these books. Well, that's all for today friends. Stay tuned to my channel if you want to see more reviews of fictional and non-fictional books. Please like, share and subscribe as well. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, goodbye.